Hey, Vinyl Community Chef here again, and we are now up to part three of my recent journey down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Now, at this point, we have reached Myrtle Beach. We are there a couple days early before the concert. We're just killing time. We're seeing the sights. We're having fun. We're hitting the record stores. And I think this is the only other record store that I have some footage of hitting but I did hit one other flea market and found some stuff, which I'll show in another video. So um, this actually is a store called Kilgore Trouts. They're in Myrtle Beach. Now, I was confused because when I went down to Myrtle Beach like four years ago, I hit a store that I went to and found some decent stuff. And I couldn't find that store because I couldn't remember the name of it. But I knew where it was in relation to the hotel we were in or the whatever condo. And I couldn't find it. So I later, in talking to people at the flea market, the guy said, I, I described the store to a, a guy, and he said, oh, that's Kilgore Trouts. They moved to another location. So I found out the mystery of who it was I went to. If you go back to my November 29th, 2020 video, where it talks about RSD uh, at that time, uh, the Black Friday record store day, um, it's called RSD Mail Call and a New Drum Set. I show all the things that I found on that trip to Myrtle Beach at that point. That was, I think, the last time I was there, 2020. So, yeah, um, this is the same store that I went to, and it's a much bigger store now. Lots and lots of stuff, but tons of videos and CDs, and and the records, you know, were about the same as they were before. Hey, hey, people, okay, we are still out and about on the road. We are now down in the Myrtle Beach area, and we're at a place called Kilgore Trouts, one of the record stores that's not too far from the condo area that we are staying at you can see my wife's ahead of me she's going in to check out the place so we're gonna go in here see what we got so far it's been a good trip had some fun looks like a pretty big store see you inside oh boy oh boy Where do you even begin in a place like this? So like brand new, why is it 30 bucks? So I'm going to jump in. I started in the used stuff and then, well, I mean, in the cheapy stuff and it moved myself up. Let's start with the cheapy stuff. Okay, let's do that. Let's reverse it. So um, looking through the $2 bin, um, I did find a jazz record, uh, David Sanborn. I'm, I'm not going to show that, but I did find The Whole World's Going Crazy by April Wine. Now it's notched out. The cover's in rough shape, but the vinyl inside was very, very good. Very good plus, plus. And for two bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Um, it's one of the early April wine albums that I needed. I think I still need the first album or so, one with the record on it. I think I've got a good majority of their older stuff. But yeah, so I grabbed that. Like I said, it, it was in great condition. Um, got the insert and everything. So two bucks, threw that in my hand cart. Then I was looking through the newly received used stuff, and I got... Uh, found flying high by blackfoot this one ran me as you can see eight dollars it says the vinyl is very good plus now it's in a sealed bag and i don't know maybe i was in a hurry maybe i just was too trustworthy and i always almost always check stuff sealed bag i just i for some reason didn't so when i got home and checked it i was saying this is not very good plus it's got all these not a lot but five or six like scratch marks across each side it's like something's been going on but i felt them I, I, I was almost on the verge of taking it back while i was still there but i thought well they don't they just they seem superficial they don't i don't feel them 
And I thought, well, for eight dollars, you know, I'll take a chance. I got home and I played it. There's a little bit of surface noise, so this would probably be more of a VG. But those marks didn't affect play. There was no popping or scratches. So fortunately, that was good. Uh, I bet you, I probably give it a, you know, one of my clean polishing type thing, and maybe some of that surface noise would go away. So for the price, I thought great. I believe. This is probably this was probably the only other early Blackfoot album that I need on vinyl, but got that. Now this one was the taking a chance, and this was, um, you know, just something I never heard of it. But I told my wife when you see a band that looks like this, you stop and check it out. This is Desperate Business by the Brian McDonald Group. I saw long hair. I gotta admit the guy with the mustache kind of seems out of place. That's that's Brian McDonald. And I thought, okay, they look like at least stopping to take a chance and take a look. So then I took a look. You know, there he is on the back. I did a little research online. I found out that they are classified as a hard rock. I think somebody described them as a glammy. You know, it is 80, what is this, 87. So it would have been from that time frame of, you know, hair metal type stuff. They're kind of classified as that, but they were also classified as AOR. I would say this band is much more like like Bon Jovi type thing, um, kind of commercial, but they sound good. It's a great sounding album, one and done. I don't know any of the guys in the band, but I noticed over here, special thanks, and it says a very special musical thanks to Reb Beach for your creative guitar work throughout this album. You're a genius. He's not listed in the credits, so my thoughts are they probably did some stuff with studio musicians, and maybe the people listed on here are the band that later performed it. But the fact that this is 1987 and Reb Beach apparently played album, played throughout the album, played guitar, I thought this is early Reb Beach stuff. That's cool. This get this Reb Beach, of course, did Dokken when 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 Rick Lynch left and George Lynch left, and then he went on to White Snake, and he's done a lot of other bands. But I thought, cool, I'll get it. It's early Red Beach. So I picked it up. And it says promo there, you know, which to legitimately would mean a white label promo. But it's not. It's just a gold stamp promo. I guess that still qualifies. It just doesn't qualify for that if you are on Discogs. But yeah, so this was the Took a Chance. And it was a good album. So yeah, it was uh, interesting. And like I said, I got something with Red Beach there. Like I said, I did pick up. That's about it for that one. I picked up a couple other things in the $2 bin. But they were... It's just some odd stuff um, that, that, you know, just kind of interesting stuff for $2. So we had a good time. I will say that they didn't have a ton of hard rock and metal, um, but the stuff they did have mm, were, was a little pricey and, you know, kind of high priced. Uh, but uh, I, it's nothing I needed anyway. There was nothing I needed. I just saw some stuff there like Keel and stuff, but it's all stuff I had. Great stuff, though. If you are in south carolina in the myrtle beach area there's at least two or three stores there and uh, kilgore trouts is probably one of the bigger ones that you should check out and i will see you later that's it for this one rock on and rock hard